In this screencast, I'll show you the equations to calculate the vapor-liquid equilibrium for a binary system, and I'll also show you how to implement them in Excel. So first of all, the theory and the equations that we need to use. We're going to use the Antoine equation to calculate the vapor pressure of the components that we're interested in, and this requires A, B and C constants for the Antoine equation that we have to look up in the literature, and we use uh, the temperature of the system that we're interested in and that will then calculate the vapour pressure for us. We're also going to use Routes law which says that the partial pressure of a component over a liquid containing that component is equal to the, the mole fraction in the liquid for the component times by the vapour pressure for that component. And finally we're also going to use Dalton's law uh, which assumes ideal gas behaviour and this says that the total pressure of the system equals the partial pressure of the components in the system and we can also work out the, the mole fraction in the vapour by calculating the partial pressure divided by the total pressure. Now in terms of the VLE calculation I've set up a spreadsheet here where we have two different components and then we have the Antoine constants and we also have the relevant temperature range over which they are applicable and these are in degrees C and we can then use this information to calculate PXY data, TXY data and so for the PXY we've set a temperature of 67 degrees and we're going to calculate that the vapour liquid equilibrium over a range of different compositions. So X1 is going to go from 0 all the way down to 1 in 0 0.01 increments. X2 is simply 1 minus that and then we can calculate the partial pressure of component 1 and so this formula implements the Antoine equation here uh, using the T and the X1 value the X1 value actually is then multiplied by the, the vapour pressure calculated by the Antoine equation and, and this is Routes law. By multiplying by X1 we work out the partial pressure here. So this is vapour pressure times by X1 to give us the partial pressure of component 1. We do the same for component 2 and then we simply sum them up to give us the total pressure in the system. Y1 comes from partial pressure divided by total pressure and Y2 again but it's the partial pressure for component 2. For the TXY we set a pressure that we're interested in and then it's very similar except in this case the temperature has been varied in order to give us the pressure that we want and you can use something like Solver or Goalseek in order to to do that. Now once we've calculated all this information we can plot it out and the first plot that I'm going to show you is if we look at how the pressure, the partial pressures and the total pressure vary with X1 and so here's the first plot and we can see pressure on the Y axis and then the liquid mole fraction for component 1 on the X axis and it shows us that the total system pressure starts around 480 millimetres of mercury and goes all the way up to around 832 millimetres of mercury and that varies and that's because the total pressure is made up of the partial pressures of the two components. Now to start with the partial pressure of component 1 is 0 and that's because there's 0 mole fraction in the liquid. But as that goes up, it goes up linearly with more fraction until it gets to that value there. And similarly, the partial pressure of component 2 starts around 481 and then goes down linearly. And this is because the mole fraction of component 2 is going down. So it's 1 minus component 1. And the sum of these two gives us the total pressure. The PXY diagram again shows the, the total system pressure versus mole fraction and the purple line shows us 
how it varies with liquid mole fraction. The orange line shows us how it varies with the vapour mole fraction for component 1. So within this region there's going to be a mixture of liquid and vapour. Above here will just be all liquid and down here will just be all vapour. TXY diagram, similar concept. We can look at the variation in temperature as we vary the mole fraction of component 1. In this region down here below that line it will be all, li all liquid then a mixture of vapour and liquid within this region and all vapour above here. Finally something that's also useful to plot is the mole fraction in the vapour for component 1 versus the mole fraction in the liquid for component 1 and this sort of plot is very useful if you're going to do something like a McCabe teal construction for a, a distillation column and this is how this might actually get used in a chemical engineering application. So overall that's an overview of, of the equations and how to implement them for binary VLE calculations.